hello everyone let us start with uh, one more method that is unit load method we have completed strain energy method then castigliness method so now let us start with unit load method in this fourth module so we are left out with last method that is unit load method again here we need to find the slopes and the deflection so for a beam frame and trusses okay by this concept that is unit load method so this method is also called as method of virtual work unit load method is also known as virtual work method so we'll discuss what exactly this virtual work method so this method is developed by john bernoulli in 1770 okay so it is used to determine the slope and deflection at a specified point of a beam frame or truss so by this unit load method you can find what is slope and deflection at a specified point in a beam frame so in case of truss what will be the displacement okay so this unit load method so ultimately we can say it as a technique that will help us to quantify displacements and rotations of the equilibrium configuration that is the shape of the structure after it has managed to equilibrate the applied loads okay so if you define the virtual work method so ultimately virtual work is nothing but imaginary work done so how when you say the work has been carried out so when the force and there is a displacement so on the system when you apply a load so it will undergo some displacement so the force into displacement is nothing but the work done so what is virtual work due to the dummy forces the dummy displacement so which are not actual but it is an imaginary so virtual work is the total work done by the applied forces which are imaginary and the inertial forces of a mechanical system as it moves through a set of virtual displacements when considering forces applied to a body in static equilibrium the principle of uh, what you can say least action requires the virtual work of these forces to be zero ultimately okay which are not at all existed so it is an imaginary work okay like dummy load okay so this unit load method or virtual work method to find the slope and deflection in beams and frames and uh, deflection in case of trusses by assumption of unit load ultimately so here if you can see the external load is removed and the unit load is applied at the point where the deflection or rotation is to be formed so if you consider any particular beam let us say a beam is there so on this beam it is subjected to some types of loading a udl or concentrated load let us consider it is a simply supported beam okay so this is a point so this is b point suppose you want to find the deflection at somewhere here c point so there is no point load acting so there is no udl is also acting but still we can find what is the slope and deflection at this point by this unit load method okay so here if you want to find the deflection at this point so first what we need to do so this whatever the actual loads are acting so due to that we need to find what will be the moment in this particular beam then again we need to remove this loadings and we need to apply a unit load okay so we need to apply the unit load where the deflection or rotation is required so if you want to find the deflection i need to apply unit load 1 kN then again i need to find what will be the moment in this so depending upon the correlation ship between the external loads and what is the moment the unit load and what is the moment so we can find what will be the deflection at this particular point if you want to find the deflection i will have the concentrated load of 1 kN if you want to find the rotation similar to Castellan's theorem i need to have the unit moment 
a couple okay one kiloton meter okay so when we go through the problems we will be understanding this in a better way so let us discuss first this the same thing uh, if you consider this is a simply supported beam okay so this beam is subjected to udl of intensity w per unit length simply supported beam carrying a udl so if you want to find the deflection exactly at the center so that is maximum deflection delta c suppose if you are interested to find so according to unit load method so what we need to have a unit load at the point where the deflection is required at that is at point c again the same simply supported beam with unit load at mid span we need to have the external loads and this unit load it is an imaginary again load that is we are applying the intensity of 1 kilo newton okay so this particular method works on the principle of again strain energy so ultimately total work done by the external forces must be equal to total work done by the internal forces if you consider this particular beam this is the external force so whatever the external forces are doing the work done so similarly this particular beam has to resist this external load by developing the internal forces that internal forces is the moment mainly it is moment the shear force and axial force torsional moment twisting moment all the types of moments are there but it will be resisting with respect to mainly due to moment correct so it has to develop the internal forces the force into displacement at the internally okay so external uh, work done must be equal to internal work done okay so what you are doing in unit load method so you are applying the udl okay then it is removed then we are applying a concentrated load okay so again the internal virtual work is considered mainly due to bending and cause due to internal moments m undergoing the rotation d theta due to the applied loading so here so ultimately the internal forces developed will be mainly on bending moment that is internal moment m undergoing the rotation d theta what will be the internal work done so moment into d theta correct so here it is written so internal virtual work done by shearing forces and axial forces is small in comparison to the bending moments and hence ignored so this equation so you are already aware okay in moment era method or conjugate b method while discussing so we have used this method uh, so this equation that is d theta is equal to m divided by a into dx the change in slope between any two points is equal to area under bending moment diagram between those two points correct the same equation d theta equal to m divided by a into dx where mx is the moment due to the applied loading this capital m it is due to the applied loading so this for the applied loading what is the moment that is mx okay the displacement of c will take a shape of so this displacement as c so if you consider this figure due to the application of unit load so then work done will be force that is 1 kiloton into displacement that is delta c must be equal to this internal work done so that is again the internal work done if i say due to this what is that due to this the what is the moment developed in this particular beam that is small m moment due to 1 kilonewton it is small m so that is the moment so 0 to l if i integrate it within the span that is 0 to l limits mx into d theta so d theta is already mx divided by ei into dx so if i substitute 1 into delta c is nothing but delta c so 0 to l mx so d theta is mx divided by ei into dx okay so ultimately we will be using this equation okay that is delta c is equal to 0 to l capital mx into small mx divided by ei into dx so where this capital mx is the moment produced in the beam due to the external loading then small mx is the moment produced due to the unit load when you apply the unit load so here 
due to the applied loading what is the moment developed that is mx so due to unit load what is the moment developed that is small mx means you need to calculate what is the moment so at a section x so here same thing what is the moment at a section x okay if it is cantilever same thing okay at a distance x what is the moment from free end so due to the load and due to the application of unit load so capital m due to the applied loading the moment produced then small m is the moment produced due to unit load so mx is the moment due to unit load ei is the flexural rigidity the product of angs modulus of elasticity and moment of inertia inertia sorry okay so let us look into the procedure for finding the deflections of the beams and the frames using unit load method so step 1 consider a section xx for a point load or a udl that is ultimately applied loads so the applied load may be a udl or a point load and then find the reactions okay so how to find the reactions if it is simply supported beam so to ultimately to find the moment we find the reactions similarly consider section xx for a unit load and then find the reactions you will remove the external loads and you will apply the unit load where the deflection is required then third step compute the bending moment that is due to the applied external forces mx then again compute the bending moment due to the unit load applied in the direction of required deflection that is small mx so due to the external load what is the moment due to the unit load what will be the moment capital mx and small mx okay so then apply unit load method for beams or frames and then compute the deflection using delta is equal to 0 to l so mx mx divided by ei into dx okay so the positive value indicate that the desired deflection is in the direction of applied unit load and negative value indicate that the desired deflection is in the opposite direction of the applied unit load okay so whatever the direction you are going to assume where the deflection is required at which point so if you find the deflection in the same direction how we have applied the load then it is positive if it is opposite direction then it will be negative at the ultimately end answers okay so similarly the procedure for finding the deflections of pin jointed trusses using unit load method to find the reaction at supports for applied external loads first you will find the reactions using your equilibrium conditions then compute the axial force that is p in a various members due to applied external force by using method of joints or method of sections so a truss is subjected to external loads due to external loads what are the forces in the members of the truss that is capital p due to the external loads okay then again find reactions and compute the axial force k in various members due to unit load okay you are going to remove all the external loads and only you are going to apply the unit load about the point where the deflection is required due to that unit load what will be the reactions then again you need to find what will be the forces in all the members of the truss okay that is k this is due to the external forces applied forces the forces in the members that is p due to unit force removing all the external loads only unit load is applied then what are the forces in the members of the truss that is capital k then compute the product delta ultimately is given by pkl so p is due to the external forces force in the members of the truss k is the force in the members of the trusses due to the application of unit load then l is span and divided by a cross sectional area and angs modulus of elasticity okay then in each member the deflection so for the entire truss so summation of each individual members pkl divided by a will provide the desired deflection okay the axial force shall be taken as positive if it is tensile and negative if it is compressive ultimately in the members of the trusses if the uh, force produced is positive then it will be tensile if it is negative then we can consider it as compressive so when we go through the problems you can understand better okay the both uh, beam and frames and also 
the trusses so ultimately remember so there will be external loads there will be unit load so due to action load what will be the moment that is m due to unit load what will be the moment that is small m okay then ultimately this equation so mx mx divided by er 0 to l over only this equation due to external load the moment the due to unit load what is the moment if you can find then it is easy to find what is the deflection okay so let us go through some problems on beams first okay so deflection of determinate beams frames and trusses using unit load method so let us start with the beam problems find the deflection at the free end of a cantilever carrying a concentrated load at the free end okay assume flexural rigidity ei as constant use unit load method okay so here ultimately it is required to find the deflection at the point b so where the concentrated load is acting okay so to find the deflection at this free end that is at point b so you are aware about this equation that is delta b is given by 0 to l mx mx divided by ei into dx so where capital m is the moment due to the external load small m is the moment due to unit load so first condition so the first figure so i need to find what is the moment in this beam due to the external load what is the external load here p okay due to p what will be the moment so in cantilever beam from free end we will cut the section so xx at a distance x b as the origin and moment so what is the moment p into x so section so rightwards anti-clockwise if it is there then positive but it is rotating clockwise so it is minus px so due to external load so you are getting the moment at a distance x as minus px okay now remove this all the external loads so what is the external load here p so remove this then apply the unit load where the deflection is required the deflection is required at point b so apply unit load okay so i am applying downwards again find what is the moment in this particular beam at a section xx b as the origin and find the moment again it is rotating clockwise so moment will be 1 into x so minus x so this is the moment so capital m is minus px small m it is minus x minus 1 into x it is minus x i hope it is clear so in case of first figure we have applied the external load whatever the load is given so then we have found what is the moment at a section so in second case we have applied unit load removing the external load and we have found what is the moment at a section xx that is minus x so now we are aware about this equation by unit load method 0 to l integration within the limits 0 to l m into m small m and capital m divided by e into dx so what is capital m due to external load minus px this is minus px small m it is minus x into dx by e i so minus of minus it will be plus p x square where p is constant the load so take it outside so only remaining is x square integration of x square then it will be x cube by 3 so within the limit 0 to l substitute the limits so ultimately we will be getting the delta b as pl cube by 3 ei okay you are getting pl cube by 3 ei correct so i hope this is okay so beam problem due to the external load what is the moment due to unit load what is the moment at a section so then use this formula and find what is the deflection over okay so it is compared to the previous methods it is much more easier to find the deflection correct so similarly one more problem on simply supported beam find the central deflection of a simply supported beam carrying a concentrated load at mid span using unit load method okay a simply supported beam 
so it is subjected to concentrated load exactly at the center mid span so l by 2 l by 2 so you need to find what is the deflection at the mid span so they are asking to find what is delta c central deflection okay delta c so how to go ahead so you are aware about the equation so integration of 0 to l capital m into small m divided by ei into dx so ei is constant we need not to worry so only if moment of inertia is changing then we need to take care so here it is constant but it is a simply supported beam problem so here the moment it will not be constant from point a to point b since the concentrated load is acting so we need to split into two portions two regions ac as one region and cb as one more region okay ac is one portion cb is one more portion okay so first the whatever the load is applied so that is external load it is in terms of p so this is the external load so find what are the reactions because to find the moment at a distance x from a and again at a distance x from point b correct so this is x we need to have the reactions first so it is a uh, symmetrical loading so due to symmetrical loading so reactions will be equal and it is calculated by total load divided by 2 so reactions at each support is r a equal to r b equal to total load is p divided by 2 the both the supports will take the load equally correct so p by 2 reaction is p by 2 reaction is p by 2 so what is the moment in ac region a as the origin at a distance x moment is p by 2 into x the sign convention it is same cut a section leftwards clockwise rightwards anti-clockwise then it is positive correct so you are taking a section here leftwards it is rotating clockwise so you are taking section here rightwards it is rotating anti-clockwise so both are in same line with the sign convention both are positive okay so this is due to the external load so moments in ac region moment in cb region similarly so again we need to have now the uh, same simply supported beam by removing the external load by application of unit load okay so by the application of unit load so here again we need to first find the reactions what is ra and what is rb again it is symmetrical load so what will be the reactions so ra equal to rb equal to 1 divided by 2 correct so total load is 1 divided by 2 so what will be the moment in ac region 1 by 2 so this is 1 by 2 1 by 2 into x so similarly here the section x okay so again it will be 1 by 2 1 by 2 into x okay two portions 1 by 2 into x so here also 1 by 2 into x so both are same okay so here next moment here so in this r into x px by 2 so in the first figure so here it will be x by 2 that is small mx correct so 1 by 2 into x so deflection at load point c so now there are two regions ac1 region cb1 region since the moments are same so here it is px by 2 here it is x by 2 so two times since the moments are same directly we can have two times into delta ac or else delta ac and delta cb correct so cb and ac both are same directly multiply with 2 so 2 times 0 to l by 2 the limit mx into mx divided by a into dx so capital m is p by 2 into x small m is x by 2 into dx by ea so then again p is constant so take it outside ea is constant so take it outside so integrate x square so it will be x cube by 3 so within the limits 0 to l by 2 substitute the limits so ultimately you are getting delta c as p l cube by 48 ei 
so you are getting the deflection as pl cube by 48 ei okay so this is the deflection what we require in case of this simply supported beam exactly at the center okay so what we have done so first we have calculated the reactions to calculate the moments okay since it is a symmetrical load directly p by 2 p by 2 then at a section x so what is the moment in ac region what is the moment in cb region it will be same so that is p by 2 into x p by 2 into x similarly we have removed the external load we have applied the unit force then again we have found what all the reactions that is half half total load is one so both the reactions will be equal and total load divided by two correct so half half so moment is 1 by 2 into x 1 by 2 into x here also 1 by 2 into x that is x by 2 1 by 2 into x x by 2 so the deflection so in both the regions we need to add it but however since the moments are same so directly 2 into this equation so substitute the values integrate it within the limits so ultimately you will be getting delta so that is pl cube by 48 ei okay so these are the standard in terms of p so similarly if the load is given okay find the deflection under the concentrated load for the beam shown in figure using unit load method take ei the flexural rigidity is 2800 kN meter square ei is given in standard unit okay what is the standard unit of ei kilonewton meter square e should be in kilonewton per meter square and i should be in meter s to 4 the product will be kilonewton meter square it is given standard okay so here what is the step we need to follow first we need to apply the external load and we need to find what is the moments in ac region and cb region by cutting a section x from a as the origin from b as the origin what is the moment stored in this particular beam correct so in ac region separately cb region separately correct first find the reactions so how we will find the reactions either take moment about b equal to 0 or take moment about a equal to 0 so once you find the reactions once you find the moments that moment will be capital m then again remove this external load then apply 1 kilonewton by unit load method so again same procedure find the reactions and find what will be the moment then you will get small m capital m small m so here step 1 to find the reactions for this external load 60 kilonewton so if you take moment about a equal to 0 so rb into 5 rb into total is 5 minus 60 into 2 okay so rb you are getting 24 kilonewton similarly if you apply sigma y equal to 0 that is sigma v equal to 0 ra upwards rb upwards ra plus rb equal to 60 minus 60 so right hand side plus 60 okay so substitute rb you will be getting ra as 36 ra is 36 rb is 24 so what is the moment in ac region so 36 into x what is the moment in bc region 24 into x correct 36 into x 24 into x check it here so again step 2 to find the reactions by applying unit load now you need to remove the external load and you need to apply the unit load where the deflection is required the deflection is required at point c so they are asking find the deflection under the concentrate load means delta c correct so apply the unit load here at point C. Once you apply the unit load, so first find the reactions. So take moment about a equal to 0, you will be getting what is Rb. You are getting 0.4 kN. So apply sigma V equal to 0, you will be getting what is Ra. That is 0.6 kN. Ra is 0.6 kN. Rb is 0.4 kN. So once you get Ra and Rb, again cut a section in AC region A as the origin in cb region b as the origin so ra into x so nothing but 0.66 into x so here rb into x 0.4 into x okay so this mx moment due to applied load 
mx small mx it is moment due to unit load correct portion ac portion cb so origin a and origin b origin a origin b limits the lengths 0 to 2 0 to 3 correct 0 to 2 0 to 3 so capital mx so here due to the external load so what is that 36 ra into x 36 into x here 24 into x so ra into x that is 36 into x so here 24 into x in cv region similarly due to unit load so ra into x what is ra here 0.6 into x so 0.6 into x so similarly in cv region from here so 0.4 into x 0.4 into x okay capital mx small mx so moment of inertia is constant so ei is constant i only okay then you are aware about this formula by unit load method applied 0 to l m into m divided by e l okay so this is for ac region this is for cb region okay so this is capital m into small m capital m into small m divided by ei it is constant add both the portions okay so 36 into 0.6 it is 21.6 by ei so remaining is x into x it is x square into dx similarly here 24 into 0 0.4 it is 9.6 by ei so x into x is x square so integration of x square is x cube by 3 so here x cube by 3 within the limit 0 to 2 0 to 3 0 to 2 0 to 3 okay so substitute the limits then simplify then you are getting so delta as 144 by ei so 144 by ei but ei value is given in this problem that is 2800 kilonewton meter square in standard unit only they have given so ultimately 144 divided by 2800 you are getting it as 0 0.05142 meters 0 0.05142 meters okay nothing but 51.42 mm you are getting 51.42 mm so if you want to do the check this is the direct equation when a concentrated load is acting at a distance a and b so we'll be getting the deflection as p a square b square by 3 ei into l so if you substitute so the same answer you are getting just do the check so this step may not be required so if you want to do it you can do it okay so up to this the deflection you need to find by unit load method i hope it is clear okay it is simple let us solve one more problem on cantilever type of brim where the moment of inertia that is flexural rigidity it is changing okay so determine the deflection and a rotation at the free end of the cantilever beam shown in figure use unit load method given ei as 2400 kilonewton meter square okay so again ei is given and it is in standard unit kilonewton meter square okay so it is a cantilever beam so ac region and cb region so since the moment of inertia is changing so we need to have two portions ac and cb okay so in cb region b as the origin so section x correct so in ac region c as the origin uh, section x correct so ac region 0 to 2 meters cb region 0 to 2 meters okay so here the deflection and rotations both are asked so what is delta b at the free end so means delta b and what is theta b okay to have the deflection at point b we should have one kilonewton that is concentrated at point b again to find the rotation or the slope we need to apply unit moment one kilonewton meter okay so let us go through this first so step one to find the deflection at the free end so at point b so consider a section xx for point loads okay as we said 
so ac is one region cb is one more region so in bc b as the origin this is the section x okay so again in ac this is the section x c as the origin okay so now if you find the moment due to the external load so first step you are finding the moment external load you will be getting what is capital m correct that is mx at a section x so the loads are rotating making a moment clockwise so according to our sign convention cut a section right hand side if it is anti-clockwise positive but they are rotating clockwise so minus 10 into x is the moment in bc portion so again if you see the ca portion so due to 10 the moment about this point is 10 into x plus 2 from here to here it is 2 meters from here to here it is x total perpendicular distance this is for this 10 kiloton is 10 into x plus 2 minus again due to this minus 10 into x correct so only here if you consider only this load will be considered if you consider here then the right hand side 10 kilotons there and one more 10 kilotons there due to both the concentric load what is the moment okay so that will be mx then second step remove this external loads and apply only at point b what is the load that is one kilonewton okay so here so removing the load external loads so applying unit load at point b where the deflection is required then again so this is the section x okay so here it is written so in ac region so this is x in cb region what is the moment 1 into x rotating clockwise so minus 1 into x then in ac region due to 1 it is 1 into x plus 2 from here to here it is 2 meters from here to here it is x so total is x plus 2 in ac region the moment will be 1 into x plus 2 correct so again so in this problem they have asked the rotation correct the rotation so if you consider the rotation then we need to apply a moment okay that is 1 kilo newton meter okay this is small m okay let it be so ultimately this moment is of magnitude 1 kN meter if you apply this 1 kN meter in this a clockwise moment okay where the uh, what slope is to be find okay so now if you want to find the slope you are applying 1 kN meter clockwise at point B so a section in this portion the moment is the moment will be constant throughout since it is directly a moment since it is rotating clockwise so minus 1 here in CB region similarly in AC region it is again minus 1 okay so here if you see capital MX moment due to applied load small MX1 that is moment due to unit load at B small MX2 that is unit moment at B okay if you apply unit moment at point B so here portion AC portion CB AC and CB in AC region so here C as the origin in CB region B as the origin so this is of span 2 meters so 0 to 2 so this is of span 2 meters so 0 to 2 so in AC portion the capital MX so this external loads 10 into X in CB portion in CB portion 10 into X clockwise so it is minus similarly here 10 into x minus 10 into x due to this 10 into x plus 2 correct so minus 10 into x plus 2 minus 10x again if you sim expand this brackets minus 10x minus 20 minus 10x so ultimately it will be minus of 20 plus 20x minus 10x minus 10x so it will be minus 20x so this is after simplification of these brackets okay so then mx1 due to the application of unit concentrated load at point b what is the moment in cb region minus x1 into x so in ac region 1 into x plus 2 so 1 into x plus 2 again it is rotating clockwise so minus 1 into x plus 2 correct so again one more thing if you apply the moment okay that is mx2 so minus 1 minus 1 since it is a directly a moment 
so it will be constant throughout from this point to this point correct so in cb region also it is minus 1 in ac region also it will be minus 1 only okay moment of inertia it is 2i here so in cb region it is i so ac region 2i in cb region is i so now you are aware about the unit load method equation so that is delta is equal to 0 to l m into m divided by ei i have written mx1 so nothing but we are finding now deflection not rotation so this is for ac region this is for cb region okay m m capital m small m in ac region and bc region so substitute the values and expand the brackets so then do the integration within the limits okay do this calculation so ultimately the deflection you are going to get it as 0 0.0638 meters or it's 63.8 mm okay 63.8 mm okay so this is the deflection similarly the rotation that is theta b they have asked we had applied one kilonewton meter at point b so already have shown in previous figure only the figure again here it is showing the same thing so then m into mx2 divided by e already we have calculated the moments so that is for ac region so due to the application of moment it is minus one again in cb region also it is minus one okay capital m into small m capital m into small m in ac region and in bc region so again expand the brackets and do the integration within the limits so 0 to 2 0 to 2 and theta b you are getting it as 60 by ei again here the ei value is given so that is 2400 kilonewton meter square in standard unit so substitute that 60 divided by 2400 kilonewton meter so ultimately you will be getting 0 0.025 radians it is a slope so you need to write in radians okay so this is how you are going to find the uh, deflection and slope in a particular b okay so let us stop it here so we'll solve a few more problems on beams and frames in next class thank you